the one thing that comes right to mind, uh, and you've heard about it by now, but I want to talk just a minute about it. The news released that Asian carp DNA has been found in Lake Erie. I, <laughs> what, what does it mean, Asian carp DNA? Does it mean they left their fingerprints there? Does it mean they left some hair follicles? I don't know what Asian carp DNA it, you know, is. And to my unscientific, uneducated mind, that would mean, well, if there's DNA there, there are Asian carp there. Not a surprise, and I, and I suspect it's not a surprise to you as well if you've thought this issue through. Man cannot, in my opinion, compete with Mother Nature. And if we think we can, I think we're being self-righteous and short, uh, short-sighted. Yes, I know the Asian carp were not, are not native to this country. But once they were brought here, Mother Nature embraced them. And as far as she's concerned now, they are a part of her environment. They're in her fold. And she, as Mother Nature, will do everything she can to make a healthy Asian carp population and expand that population both in numbers in where they are now and geographically. She will expand Asian carp to everywhere Asian carp can exist. Eventually, there'll be waters too deep and too cold that the fish won't go there. Too deep, too cold. Hmm. Does that sound like any water you can think of? Does that sound like maybe Lake Michigan? And I don't mean to make fun of this, but I tell you, I, I've, I'm, I'm kind of sick of hearing about Asian carp. And if you've been with me any length of time, you know that I have some very strong feelings on the Asian carp issue and maybe a little bit different than what you are used to hearing. Number one, I'm not convinced the sky is falling. I know that it's very popular for the media and even some in the outdoor media, to make this into an issue that's going to destroy the Great Lakes fishery. Because it gets your attention. It gets my attention. And the politicians like to jump on it because they know it has your attention. Now, what makes a politician valuable if we as the people look at them as somebody who can save us from a problem? So the politicians have jumped on this. Now, have they done anything besides talk about it for the last two years? No, not that I can see. I don't pretend to follow politics on a daily basis, but I haven't seen them do anything. So you could say, well, maybe they're using this potential emergency as a way to to stay in the limelight. Maybe the same thing for researchers. Now, I, I realize I am generalizing here and probably overgeneralizing. But I'm trying to figure out how the Asian carp issue continues to be a major debacle waiting to happen for two years, yet it hasn't become that debacle yet, and we haven't really done anything, anything to address it. I'm not convinced, back up, I am convinced that there are Asian carp in Lake Michigan now, and if not, there will be. Just like there will be in Lake Huron, Lake Ontario, Lake Erie now we know, Lake Superior, I don't know. What will those Asian carp do in those bodies of water? I don't know. And anybody who tells you they know what they're going to do is either ignorant or they're lying. Let me not be so harsh. They're either uninformed or they're telling tales. We don't know. We can make some educated guesses. We do know that Asian carp want warm, dirty, slow-moving, shallow water. That does not describe Lake Michigan. Now, it does describe, say, the Kalamazoo River, the Grand, the Saginaw, maybe Saginaw Bay, maybe Lake Erie. So, yes, that, I'm not saying there's no reason to be concerned. Not at all. And I do believe that we as humans should do everything possible to eliminate Asian carp, if possible, which I don't think it's doable, or at least slow down the speed of the invasion. But so far, all we've done is talk about it. So they've had a two-year jump on us because we just sat back and talked about it. So I think they're coming. I think in many places they're here, as we now believe they are in Lake Erie. Um, and if you talk to the people who live with Asian carp every day, 
like Chris Brackett down on the Illinois River. BracketOutdoors.com, one of the original uh, aerial bow fishing for carp guides. He'll put a different spin on things. He says you can't always find them. They don't always jump. For example, you can't make them jump with a fiberglass I.O., an inboard outboard. You need a, an outboard and a metal boat to get them to jump. And when you've got millions of baby Asian carp growing up, the native species... Yes, they may eventually get moved along if you find a body of water that is absolutely perfect, like the Illinois is. But the native species of fish, in the meantime, have millions of baby Asian carp to feed on. So the local populations in many places are actually healthier. So, um, you know, it... it when you see a newspaper headline, if anybody even reads newspapers anymore, or when you watch a local newscast, you're going to get the impression that indeed the sky is falling. Asian carp have been found in Lake Erie. The world is coming to an end and our recreational fishery as we know it is over. Did zebra mussels destroy the fishery? Did gobies destroy the fishery? Both are invaders. Both are here from the outside. Both did not get here originally from Mother Nature. Not only have those not destroyed the fishery, in some places they've helped the fishery. So again, I don't think Asian carp are a good thing. I don't want them. I don't think we can stop them. I think we have talked about them long enough just because it makes a good story. And before you get too concerned about Asian carp, remember this. We already have Asian carp, say in Saginaw Bay. Did you know that? There are Asian carp in Saginaw Bay and have been for 20 years. The grass carp. Not the silver carp, not the big heads. Grass carp. Uh, And I didn't even get a chance to talk about the picture of the cougar from southern Marquette County, but I will. (laughs) I got over two and a half hours. You can bet I will get to it. Lots more coming up this week right here on Outdoor Magazine. 